Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to the fourth edition of the 10 year, 10 minute interview with LPA and a guest speaker. Uh, another very distinguished person we have the honor to host today, uh, namely Luc Frieden. Hello, Luc. How are you? Hello, hello, Raja. Hello, everybody. Yeah, great to see you. Uh, I know you're a regular guest and star speaker of uh, LPA events in your different capacities as former minister, as a top lawyer, as the chairman of a, a bank and also of the Chamber of Commerce here in Luxembourg. But today we invited you really because you're probably if one of the, if not the most legitimate source of insight for those of us who are trying to draw parallels between the 2008 crisis and this crisis. And so we're spending 10 minutes together, uh, the, just the two of us, and then we open up to a host of Q&As. We already received quite a few questions for you, Luc, so brace yourself for a longer session than 10 minutes. Uh, I, I could go on about your biography, but it's available in many different respects, and not least uh, through also the book that you wrote called Europa 5.0, which is in German, but we'll get back to that. So welcome, Luc. And uh, tell me if I said something that I shouldn't have said or forgot something that I should have said about you before we kick off with the three questions that I have for you. No, hello again, Raja. So far it was uh, all okay. Thanks for having me on this uh, webinar. Excellent. Well, you seem in good form, uh, which is important because uh, you were finance minister back in 2008. And uh, at the time, you know, I guess you had to go through very special moments we are living again through very special moments. Are you drawing parallels between the two episodes? And, and tell us about whether it's appropriate or not. Yes, very much so. Obviously, the um, causes of this uh, crisis are different. And in the crisis in 2008, uh, we didn't have uh, all those uh, dramatic deaths and uh, all the sick people. But on, economic, uh, on the economic front, I think there are many parallels. Um, one of them being that in both cases it came in a very uh, sudden manner and it was international. It was really something that happened around the globe and had impacted Luxembourg uh, quite strongly. Uh, a second lesson is certainly that um, we had to intervene as states, Luxembourg, Luxembourg government, also other governments, in a quite dramatic manner to support the economy and to save the system because the system was um, at stake the whole financial system was about to break down um, third i think um, last time it took quite a while before the economy uh, turned normally again um, it took six years actually that crisis people often tend to forget that and um, i think here we are only at the very beginning of a rather long economic crisis, because this starts in different places of the world, then it goes to other places and all economic sectors affected. So I think the, um, the economy will be hit quite strongly. In 2008, uh, and that is quite interesting, in 2008, we felt in Luxembourg also that the economy uh, shrunk, but we were hit most strongly in 2009 and that went on until 2012. And um, so I think um, there will be waves where we will feel this and that will not finish when the lockdown finishes. Okay, well, we're not gonna try to speculate on the future, but we, we'll, we'll come back to this. The second question I would like to ask you is, speaking of states intervening uh, and speaking of uh, financial services, how do you see the resilience of Luxembourg's economy in our sector in particular? And I know PE was not as big back then as it is today, and also at the EU level. And how are the two intertwined? Obviously, in 2008, it started with a um, liquidity crisis. It started in the financial sector. Let us not forget that the subprime crisis in the US led to the bankruptcy of um, Lehman Brothers then to other banks, uh, and uh, that was the beginning of um, a quite strong recession, actually the strongest recession since World War uh, II. So after the crisis, um, immediately after the crisis, quite a number of measures were taken to strengthen the financial sector, additional capital requirements, um, 
a different um, uh, supervision at the more European and international level. Uh, quite a number of uh, structures were that were uh, quite often used in the past, but not tolerated anymore in uh, late run. So I think that this time the financial sector is much more resilient. However, I think we should not um, forget that if the real economy is this time hit in the first instance, that will of course have a serious impact on uh, the markets and that has an impact of the, on the fund industry, obviously, in our country. But it may also have a strong impact on the banks once uh, the companies, the debtors, cannot repay uh, their loans. So um, the banks, as I said, are this time much stronger. The financial sector is um, better prepared than last year, last time. There were also all these stress tests that took place since then. So I'm not worried about the financial sector, but we should not be naive. I think the hardest piece will only come in a few uh, months from now and even, um, um, even more next year. And so no difference really between Luxembourg level and European level in this resilience and possible stress tests to, to come to us? Well, fortunately, we introduced uh, the banking union uh, after uh, 2000, the crisis, the financial crisis, the single supervisory mechanism in 2012, 2013. And so uh, the ECB and uh, the central banks have a better view about all the European banks. Nevertheless, it's clear that uh, a number of countries uh, had serious financial difficulties, were in serious financial difficulties before the crisis. And those countries will not be in a position, uh, again, not be in a position, I would say, to intervene uh, both vis-a-vis -vis their real economy and the banks if uh, the need arises. And uh, therefore, I think that um, uh, we even should do more to strengthen the economic and monetary union including in all the aspects of the, um, of the banking union to make sure that if a further crisis arises, uh, we know what, um, uh, where the failures are. We know those countries, we knew them in the past and now they are hit uh, in a very serious manner and that will cause additional problems in the mm -hmm. Eurozone in the months ahead. Okay, you're cautiously pessimistic, I would say, but uh, it leads me to my third question because I well, Roger, say... Roger, I'm, I'm, um, I'm realistic, but I'm also optimistic because um, what happened in 2008, we managed to save the financial system. Some of the newspapers at, the t at that time said that the, it will be the end of the euro and the whole financial system, uh, the global economy uh, will never be the same anymore after the crisis and will collapse. The euro is still a strong currency. None of the major banks in Europe um, uh, went bankrupt because the governments intervened, including in Luxembourg. And uh, capitalism and globalization is still there. So I, that is the optimistic part, Raja. I, I knew that if I would call you a pessimist, you would immediately come up with this. So thank you, which leaves me uh, two minutes for my last question. You, you mentioned the real economy, uh, and I think we're all worried about jobs and the uh, relatively real life situations, uh, difficulties. So as a practicing lawyer uh, and a very distinguished lawyer, do you see any measures in the contingency plans or continuity plans that companies should think about first uh, when weathering this, as you said, long-term uh, difficulty, because it's not, you know, we don't even know how it's going to unfold, as you say, long-term. Well, I think the, the, the short-term issues have been dealt with in a quite impressive uh, manner, that is the business continuity, that is all the uh, home working and IT related questions. So I think that has been quite impressive. I think it's now um, important that companies think of how they uh, structure themselves to reopen uh, in the short term. That is to say that um, I don't think that we can go back from one day to another to work again in our offices. So this will take, in my view, several months. And we need to make sure that we 
do not forget to focus on our long-term objectives in the respective companies. Uh, the business strategies that we had before the crisis will also still be accurate after the crisis. They may have to be readjusted. And I think for boards of companies, that has to be uh, now has to be in the focus. Where do we want to be uh, as of September, let's say. Plus, um, I think um, uh, we have to uh, see whether all the legal instruments are in place because you talked about uh, the legal aspects. A lot of companies need to have their uh, general meetings of shareholders in the coming um, weeks or months in a different manner. The loans have to be, some loans have to be renegotiated. Uh, we have to see how these uh, state guarantees for corporate loans will work. I'm a little bit worried that they are not strong enough um, because um, uh, the wording in the draft bill is not, um, uh, is not precise enough, but maybe that can still be improved in the coming weeks. So there's a lot of legal work that needs to be done. There is a lot of strategic work also that should be done. And we should not only focus on the short-term operational things, but we should think where do we want to go once this crisis eases a little bit when the, when the real economic crisis is still not finished. Yeah, and we have to figure out how we will know that it's uh, easing up. But um, as you say, maybe with the gradual deconfinement. So there's quite a few yeah. questions. And maybe to make it a, a transition, uh, you, you seem to think that banks will be part of the solution this time around in the crisis. Banks are certainly part of the solution, but um, they have quite strict um, uh, requirements to follow so they cannot just distribute uh, money to anybody who will be in front of their uh, desk to ask for money. So um, I think the banks will play a role. The state guarantees help a little bit um, because the banks this time are strong, but they must watch out that they don't become weak because they are too relaxed in granting uh, credits. So mm -hmm. I think, um, uh, yes, the banks are part of the solution, but they, um, they are not a supermarket um, where you can just um, get anything you want their conditions to be fulfilled and that will not change. Otherwise we create a financial crisis after the economic crisis. There's also, th thank you, Luc. There's also a question, so you spoke about the banks, real economy, so, and we saw that the Luxembourg government has come up with a very strong uh, stimulus or support package. What kind of impact will that have, you think, on, on, on taxation, but also on, on public finance? Although we know Luxembourg can afford it from a debt to GDP ratio standpoint. Luxembourg has always had uh, strong uh, public finances. Luxembourg had always had the AAA uh, rating, but um, public debt is always bad because you need to reimburse it. We had at the worst moment of uh, the financial crisis, a public debt of around 23% uh, of GDP. Um, I'm worried that if uh, we distribute too much money now, uh, we will have to indeed uh, to um, increase taxes in the future, which would be very bad for the economy and for the purchasing power of the people. So um, I caution against uh, wishes that the state to just distribute um, uh, too much money. I think it's the package of the government uh, is a good one. It's, by the way, uh, in terms of GDP, uh, more or less similar to the one that was uh, decided uh, in financial crisis. Um, so it's, um, it can be done, but we should uh, be careful not to ask too much from the state, because the state at the end of the day, it's us, it's our money, it's the money of the taxpayers, companies and private persons, and it needs to be reimbursed one day. So I think we should not exceed 25% of the GDP for public debt in Luxembourg. And does it mean some should get less than others or some should not get and others get more, uh, get something based on certain criteria? How, how can this be selectively contained? Well, in this package, um, only about 2 billion um, out of a total of 9 billion are direct uh, financial assistance, mainly uh, short term working, chômage uh, partiel, which I think is very useful. And that is, of course, given to all the companies which cannot uh, uh, give enough work to their uh, staff right now. 
for other assistance, which is mainly indirect assistance, we anyway are confronted with a situation that these are mainly indirect assistance for companies. So they have to go to their bank and ask for loans or ask for moratoria. And so uh, there will be anyway a little bit of selection. In general, I don't think that you should give every company the same amount. So maybe for small amounts, that was once okay, these 5,000 euros help and so on. But in general, it's not, it's not necessary, it's not good if you give everybody the same because everybody is in a different uh, situation. But in general, again, I think the package so far can be welcomed. It's an important short-term buffer. But the real question will be, what do we do after the crisis to relaunch the economy? And therefore, I say um, a reduction of bureaucracy, a reduction of regulation, of some regulation, a reduction of taxes is what we need. And therefore, we cannot have too much public debt. Otherwise, we cannot reduce taxes. And however, that is necessary after the crisis. Okay, reducing regulation, we will mark your words on this one. It's an important notion for the private equity community. I have three more questions. For those of you who want to ask Luke more questions, please, uh, you just click on the uh, icon button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we spoke about real economy, the government level. Let's speak about the euro level. What about Corona bonds? Uh, what do you think about them? Should it help Italy? Should it be syndicating the debt of all countries? It's a question we got a few times. I'm not a big fan of um, Corona bonds, of any bonds, because that is in fact additional public debt that you give to countries that are not in a position to reimburse those debts. This time, um, the southern European countries are not to blame for the problem because uh, it's uh, nobody uh, in those countries can be re made responsible for being so strongly affected by the uh, virus. What I think is that we need solidarity vis-a-vis -vis Italy and Spain and I think we should give them direct financial assistance because if we give them additional loans with a, GD with a debt to GDP which is already now at around 130% they will anyway not be in a position to reimburse those loans. So I'm arguing in favor of, of uh, direct solidarity assistance. I'm, I also think that the European stability mechanism that we set up after the financial crisis can be of help. Um, corona bonds, um, uh, I think it's uh, not the adequate answer at this moment, but that should not be misunderstood. I'm in favor of a solidarity mechanism for the countries that are most affected. It's in the interest of those countries, but it's also in our common interest because if one of those countries would have a serious economic impact, like in 2008 and afterwards, that would affect us all. So it's solidarity, but it's also making sure that the crisis will not impact all of us in a dramatic manner. Thank you, Luke. This is not a question, but I feel like asking you then, how do we decide who gives how much to Italy in terms of aid? Is it a percentage of wealth of the country or it, well, it seems like a great idea? I like it. We have a European budget in which uh, every country, according to a certain percentage uh, of its uh, national economic strengths, uh, participates. We have other instruments such as the European Investment Bank, which um, has been doing a great job in the relaunch of the economy uh, after the financial crisis. We have the European stability mechanism where every country has a certain degree of participation. So I think we have instruments in place to intervene and we should do this fast with a certain leadership. And uh, I regret indeed that these discussions um, at the European level are uh, so difficult, as I said, and this remains true also in this and after this crisis. The European Economic and Monetary Union must become much more of a political union because a certain number of decisions cannot be taken anymore at a national level. We see in this crisis that everybody, every country is interconnected. So the solutions must also be uh, European, especially when it comes to economic uh, issues. Well, Luc, we, I always knew you were a man of conviction and today you prove that once more. So I hope your words I heard uh, beyond our community of private equity, because obviously this crisis goes way beyond our industry, but we're also about the real economy. Maybe one final question. 
uh, on Europe. Mm -hmm. I mean, you said earlier in 2008, some thought this would be the end of it. Uh, where is Europe today? And maybe you could place this in the context of your great book, Europa 5.0, right, in German, until it gets translated. Tell us about that vision and you feel it's obsolete today? Because when did you write that book? I forgot the date. 2016. Ah, so not that long ago. No, that was after the crisis because my belief then was, and it is today, that the single European market already today uh, allows us to uh, grow in a much stronger way if we uh, look what opportunities the single market gives us by uh, cooperating across borders, also at the level of uh, companies. I think there is an enormous potential when it comes to research and development, uh, when it comes to production of, the, of developing uh, new uh, possibilities for uh, selling our products and services if we use the full potential of the single European market. And Europe is and remains an area where we have a quite strong purchasing power, where we have great people, great companies, but we use it uh, too little. Uh, it's very often uh, that we think that we can solve problems on a national level. And Luxembourg is a good case to show that if you think cross-border, if you uh, choose to invest abroad, if you choose to uh, do business cross-border and to adapt your legislation and make sure that the cross-border thinking is taken into account, then you can be, become uh, successful. I think that Europe is not in such a bad shape. Um, if we uh, want to be strong, however, in the future, we must give a little bit more uh, thoughts to how to further strengthen Europe. Outside there is China, there is the US, and we can only be a player in, in world affairs, both political and economic, if we are united as Europeans. Otherwise, I think we should not only complain about other economic powers that grow, but also in this crisis, we should not forget the long-term focus, and that is to, to be an, a continent in which we have um, rule of law combined with economic uh, prosperity. That has been the foundation of the European Union, and we should make sure that it remains uh, the purpose and the goal of the European Union for the decade to come. I love the words because PE is all about long-term, Luke, so... Let's hope our companies weather the storm and uh, I'm sure we'll have you back one form or another before the summer to comment on the tunnel as we get deeper into it. Uh, thank you so much on behalf of LPA and its members. Uh, we're going to have a short break because it's Easter weekend, uh, but on the 16th of April, we will host uh, our president. I think I never interviewed Klaus Mansfeld live. So that should be uh, interesting. And, you know, he, he's an LP on the 16th of April. But meanwhile, if you want to contact Luc or ask him more questions, please reach out to the team. And uh, Luc, thank you so much. Any word of the end or before the, we break? No, first of all, thank you for having me. And again, I think um, with uh, common effort, with uh, solidarity, and if we stick together, I think we can come out of this uh, crisis. It will be a few more difficult months, but I'm very hopeful that um, we have survived other crises in the past, um, uh, the reconstruction after the war, the steel crisis, which in Luxembourg was uh, quite dramatic in the 70s, the financial crisis, and that makes me hopeful that we can also come out of this uh, crisis as a strong, prosperous European nation in, after this crisis. Thank, Thank you, you and Luke. happy Easter. You too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.